Hello everyone. Welcome to the Learning Express YouTube channel. So today in this video, I am going to discuss about common source amplifier with diode connected load. So till previous videos, whatever I discussed was about to the common source amplifier with resistive load. So now the point is that what was the problem with the resistive load? And if this load is replaced by a diode connected device, then the questions comes into the mind are what is diode connected load? or how the diode connected device act as a load. So these are a few questions. So I'm going like this. Okay. So this is the first question. What is diode connected load? Then if I talk about the diode connected load, then simply PMOS and NMOS where uh, gate and drain are shorted is known as the diode connected device. So in this way, I designed this small signal model. So overall, we can say that if this is a source, Okay, so if this is your source between these two points, the source is applied here, then this is structure, this internal structure is working as a diode. So overall we can uh, see it as like this, where this is source and if this source, uh, suppose Vx is applied here and this is uh, behaving like the diode. So this is the diode connected load. In this drain and the gate are shorted, drain and gate are shorted so if you want to measure its load so suppose uh, i want to measure its load between these two terminals then we can simply say using the small signal model we can find its load and for that drawing the small signal we can go like this so this uh, gate and drain making short in this uh, small signal model and apply this test source vx between these two open terminals then we'll get the uh, impedance as 1 upon gm in both the cases 1 upon gm so if we want to look from this lower side or if we want to look from the upper side from any individual side if you want to calculate its impedance suppose if you want to calculate its impedance from the side of drain then this um, short should be grounded and if we are looking from that side its impedance will be 1 upon gm and also from the side of gate uh, not from gate it is also from the side of source it will be 1 upon gm so now the second thing is uh, how to measure its impedance. So if I want to measure its impedance, then we can simply apply the test source. We can simply apply the test source. And between this, if this body is connected to ground, say so NMOS, then this will be like body effect will come into the picture. Because source is at the potential Vx source is at the potential vx and body is at zero potential so there is a vsp not equal to zero that's a body effect will come into the picture and in this case if i'm looking from the side of the source i'll get the impedance one upon gm plus gmb so this is the impedance which i'm getting from this side so this GMB term is coming into the picture because of body effect. Otherwise, it will be 1 upon GM only. If GMB is 0, in practical, we can say this GMB is small in comparison of GM. In general, it is small. But for the sake of simplicity, we will consider GMB also. Here, because body effect is considered. If you want to see the small signal analysis, then you will see that gate is grounded. Okay, it is connected to VDD. And drain is grounded because it is connected to VDD. Otherwise, if lambda is not equal to zero, if lambda is not equal to zero, then this R naught is also in, uh, coming into the picture. And this GMB VBS is coming into the picture due to body effect. So overall, if I uh, want to find the impedance from the side of source, this is Vx by Ix, it is nothing but equal to one upon GM plus GMB. So this is the impedance if I want to look from this side of source. Now, now next thing is why diode connected load? So here is the point why I'm connecting diode connected load instead of RD. So now the points are, first point is resistor is implemented by the MOSFET. In the case of diode connected transistor, we are implementing that resistor which we are using RD uh, previously. It is implement, implemented by the MOSFET. So in second point in some CMOS technologies, it is difficult to fabricate resistor with a controlled value or reasonable physical size. So this is the difficulty on the fabrication level. Usually we find that in CMOS technologies, the 
physical size of the register and the value are little bit uncontrollable things. So if you want to implement resistance, then we can use a MOSFET simply instead of implementing that CMOS register here, the physical register that I used the ID here. So I can easily design or I can easily use the MOSFET instead of that register. So the gain is independent of bias currents and voltage. So now this point is coming into the picture because in common source amplifier, we, are, we can see that gain is in general. This gain in, in general is nothing but minus GM RD. So this GM is nothing but consisting the terms of voltage and current. Like this GM is nothing but 2 ID divided by VGS minus VTS. So overall, this GM is a function of voltage or current. That's why this GM is variable with this overdrive voltage or current. So your gain is also variable with this voltage and current. So in that sense, if we want to make this gain independent of uh, current and voltages, then we can simply apply here this um, diode connected device. In diode connected device, if you want to calculate, if you simply want to say this uh, common source stage, this is your stage basically. And above that, one upon GM register is there. One upon GM2 for this is your M1, this is your M2. Okay. So one upon GM2 is there. And this is your input and this is your output. So in this gain, in this case, the gain is nothing but minus GM1 into RD. What is the RD? Minus 1 upon GM2. So overall, it is nothing but minus GM1 divided by GM2 if body effect is negligible or GM is negligible. But in general, if GM is also into the picture, then we can say this gain is nothing but minus 1 upon GM1 GM2 plus GMV2. From this side, it is nothing but 1 upon GM2, which is going to act as the RD. And this is your mainly the amplifier device. So here we'll get the gain as what I mentioned G, V out by V in equal to minus GM1 instead of RD, we have GM2 plus GMV2. So yeah, voltage gain and is linear character. So what about the linear characteristics? So if we draw the large signal equivalent here, we we'll see that between these two points, your characteristics are almost linear. Characteristics are almost linear. So this is our VTH. And this is the point where your M1 leaves the saturation or come into the triode. Here, M1 comes into triode. And in this reason, your M1 or can say is off. But in this reason, M1 is in saturation is in saturation. So AB I mentioned here. So when we take this GM, this ratio eta is nothing but GMB2 by GM2. And on the basis of design label, on the basis of design label, this GM1 is implemented like 2 mu COX ID1. After that, we know that ID1 equal to ID2. So this ratio is coming like this. So now eta is the responsible term. If eta equal to zero, then your AB is totally dependent on WLW, WAL of both the transistors. And if eta is not equal to zero, then it will also consist the term GM2 and GM2. It's a design point of view actually. If we continue the design, uh, design point of view continue, then if we want to implement this diode connected load using PMOS instead of NMOS, then we'll see the structure. Here, this uh, GMB, first advantage of implementing this diode connected load using PMOS is that GMB2 will always be zero. No body effect will come into the picture 
because body is also connected with the highest potential that is your VDD. So if VDD is zero because of a small signal analysis, so this GM B2 is always zero means no body effect is going to come into the picture. So this term one upon one plus eta, one upon one plus eta is going to escape because this thing is zero. So this is one. And now, now if uh, now come to the design point, if I want to get the AB equal to 20, uh, not 25, it's five. And mu n is nothing but it equal to two times of mu p. Then we can say that w i l one uh, is equal to 12.5 times of w i l o means for a b equal to 5, this should be like 25. So if a b is equal to root 25 means 5. So this root 25, this 25 is nothing but so if this is cutted by like two times, then W I L of one is equal to 12.5 times of W I L of. So the next thing is, what are the limitations of diode connected load here? So first thing is the limited voltage swing. So for large voltage gain, if uh, a large voltage gain, a strong input device is needed because for the large voltage gain, we can say here, WIL of first transistor means M1 transistor should be larger or large enough for getting large gain than the WIL of 2. So we can say that the strong input device is needed. Means WIL of 1 is large, means W is large. You can say strong input device is needed. So the capacitance is coming into the picture. If we'll increase the W1, if we'll increase the W1 or L1, your capacitance will increase because capacitance is nothing but this capacitance drain capacitance or uh, gate capacitance it is nothing but k times cox wyl it is like this so if wyl is increasing means area is increasing capacitance will increase and this capacitance will limit the output voltage swing now the behavior of transistor so in today's streamer technology, we cannot ignore the CLM effect. So if CLM is also considered, then we can observe that a complex, uh, some complex formulation will be there. And due to the CLM, if we look into the current equation, then one extra term will come into the picture, which is nothing but one plus lambda VDS. And this term departs your current equation away from square law departs from a square law and a square law is important here because uh, if, because if we take the square root of this current equation then we can again create this overdrive voltage means due to the overdrive we are getting the current and if we want to get the uh, overdrive voltage again then we can or then we need it's a square root so this is the kind this thing i am talking about the like the current mirroring action so this thing I'll discuss later on. So these are the limitations here. So the next video I'm going to tell you about the common source amplifier with current source load. So previously I discussed all the videos related to the common source amplifier with resistive load. And in this video, I discussed about the common source amplifier with uh, diode connected load. And next video I'll discuss about the current, current source load. So this is enough for this video. Thank you.